What's up, everybody, and welcome to a very special episode of Live With. Today, we're super excited to be sitting down with Sean Farquhar and John Ornay. Both John and Sean are involved in a recently released Kickstarter project called Lost in the Shuffle, a feature documentary. We are actually super pumped to see this thing coming to life. We saw a little bit of a sneak peek of the trailer the other day, and I got to say, I was really excited. I have to say, too, there was so much energy and excitement, Sean, on your end about <laughs> this whole project. I'm, I'm looking forward to this man i am so stoked it, it's been in my head now this project john i've been working on for almost two years and it's been in my head for about a year and a half before then so to actually talk about it i'm very excited well that's good to hear because we have lots to chat about steve you ready to do this man i am ready let's do it <laughs> So, Sean, you mentioned that you had this kind of in mind for two years now you've been working on this thing. What first really prompted you to decide to do a documentary on playing cards? Well, it wasn't so much I wanted to do a documentary. I wanted to tell the story somehow, and uh, I didn't know how to get it out there. It wasn't until uh, I'd opened up Hidden Wonders and John came as a guest. Uh, I didn't know him. Uh, he watched the show uh, afterwards. Uh, uh, out of the clear blue, he just contacted me and said, hey, uh, really love the show. You want to get together and have a beer? Uh, that's a key word. Uh, I went, yeah, <laughs> beer sounds like a good deal to me. And so we went to have a beer and eat some food. And it was a great conversation. We just talked about, you know, magic and stuff. He mentioned some films and it kind of ended. And then uh, he phoned up again a few days later and said, you want to get together and have a beer? And I'm like, yeah, it sounds like a plan. <laughs> so after a couple of beer and food meals, uh, we were talking. He was talking about uh, some idea for a story for a documentary that he's wanting to find something new and he really wanted to do something with me. And that's when I kind of tipped that I've had this thing in the back of my head for a long time about a court card conspiracy. And so I, I laid out the basics of it, just the basics of the breadcrumbs. And I could just see the glint in his eyes. Like, that's a story. And I was like, yeah. And he cleverly was able to make it more by saying, instead of just, you know, having a cold case murder mystery, let's make it like a love letter to to magicians and to magic by bringing in other nice. artists and talking to them about their relationship with cards. And cause we're all addicted to them, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, it's not addicted. Clearly, clearly uh, we got the first step, Steve is admitting you have an addiction. <laughs> I'm, I'm not addicted. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I talked to a person the other day and they said, so uh, I have like 15 decks of cards. I've been magic two years. I think I might have a problem. I said, 15, uh, I've got more than 15 on my desk at this very yeah. moment. Dude, I bought, I bought 15 today. 15 has <laughs> got the opposite problem. They're not addicted enough to cards yet. But here's my question to you. How close have you ever looked at not the back design, but the face designs of a deck of cards? Usually, unless it's a custom deck, like a standard deck, not that close, man. Right. A standard deck, we just assume we know everything about it. But, yeah. but you know, there's a one-eyed jack and you know that, uh, that you know, there. but do you know like that there's a king without a mustache? No. no. Did you know, <laughs> I, did you know that none of them uh, or only the jacks have colored hair? Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you a lot <laughs> about them. I, I can, I can tell you that uh, here's a great one. When you look at the four queens, are they all facing the same way? No. One are they of facing them forwards? Are they facing to the side? One, one of them's different. That's right. The queen of spades. She faces the opposite direction from the others. The and only reason why I know is because when I was doing my recent deck, I literally went through all this stuff with Brad to kind of go over everything. Going over stuff. Well, most people don't look at all that stuff. And you got to uh, wonder when the artist did it at that time, John and I have been looking back at the history of when playing cards were made and when when the, the Ruin deck from France became the most popular, which went to England, ended up being United States playing card company go-to deck. They don't even know who the artists are of yeah. the, the art that they're publishing. That's kind of crazy, right? Yeah, that's yeah. why they've never actually had a trademark or copyright on the face designs because they go back so far that actually uh, putting a name on it's impossible. Yeah. yeah, and it's crazy. It's crazy because I think if you look at the designs, I think some of them are errors. You know, I think they're just unfinished. I think that's that's definitely one of the stories because for centuries before it was mechanized and it was all being done by hand, a lot of things were you know, kind of chalked up to being printer error. But right. who knows? <laughs> plates that wore away and then they changed the design slightly, thinking that's what it was. Uh, all that is in the story because I believe that when the artist who made that deck of cards, that one design 
in that one area, which became the popular one, he was putting an entire story back in those days of not marrying people read, but everybody uh, told a story. And to illustrate the stories, they used paintings, you know, Leonardo da Vinci. We all know that there's hidden messages in all of his paintings. That's, that's, it's known now. Yeah. Uh, stained glass windows have all the stories of the church in them so that they can illustrate them to the unintelligent who weren't able to read. <laughs> so why wouldn't you have a deck of cards with the story built right into it yeah. that, that, that told of something. And I can tell you, it's this tale of the killing of a King and hiding it as an accident. And, uh, uh, over the years, we've misinterpreted it as suicide, and it's not. It's it's downright murder. It sounds That's like crazy. it sounds like our judicial system. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it sounds like this would be like a top. Like I'm I'm in the midst of like watching a uh, television show that's all about like murder and true crime podcasts. This sounds like a perfect thing for a documentary or a true crime podcast to kind of get into that and dig into this age old mystery. It's a 500 year old cold case murder. That's what I think it is. But That's crazy. on the path, I, I want to talk to the other artists, people like Alexandra Duvivier and uh, Michael Vincent. We've got Richard Turner and Juan Tamariz all signed on to the project. That's so really I want to cool. I want to talk to them about why they're involved in magic and why cards especially and what draw them to it. I want to talk about what their favorite plots are. This was John's idea and I thought it was brilliant is to ask them about what their favorite plot in magic is. What drew them to that plot? Can they show what the original one looked like? And then what they've done with it now that makes it so much more unique and special in their own way. Oh, that's cool. It is, right? Yeah. Just it, Then from there, I want to take all those plots and I'm going to put them all together, their plots and my favorite, and I'm going to make one routine that's actually going to illustrate the cold case murder. Uh, that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah, to me, it's, uh, it's really fascinating because, you know, I mean you guys apart who, you know, spend a lot of time focused on cards and their arts. Uh, I think for most people, we don't spend a lot of time looking at them or considering them like we use them a lot, but they're right. just like a tool. Um, and the idea that um, in the hands of a magician, this becomes something completely different. I mean, I asked Sean at one point, like how many card tricks he thinks are out there. And it's, you know, <laughs> who knows? Is it tens, thousands, hundreds of thousands? and you know new ones every day and so how is it possible that this one very simple item can just produce so much creativity or inspire so much creativity um yeah. i think it's pretty fascinating i think it, i think it all comes from the basics though right there's there's definitely a handful of your basic sleight of hands right Technique. and then you have all the steps on to that you know which is like variations of i can and like stuff like that you know, that falls into that same category, but ultimately it started from the basic, right? I kind of compare it to a piano. There's only, you know, eight <laughs> chords, but there's a million songs. Yeah. And it's our piano. The magician's piano <laughs> is a deck of cards. <laughs> Another great metaphor. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Um, because of it, you think about it, you know, there's only eight notes. And yet some reason we can listen to a billion songs on the radio for, for hundreds of years. The same thing with a deck of cards. And as it progresses and develops and we create uh, not new notes, but new ways to make the note sound like a new note. Yeah. I mean, and just like music, you know, if you keep hearing the same thing over and over again, it gets boring. <laughs> oh, 100%. Yeah. <clears throat> it's amazing. Yeah. And so, John, have you always had this interest in magic as well? Or is this something where you just kind of stumbled into it when you saw Sean perform? Uh, I've been watching Magic since I was a kid. Um, I think one of the happiest nights of my life was a couple of years back. I got a chance to go to the Magic Castle. Uh, I was in L.A. for a premiere of one of my short films, which was the following day. And the experience of the Magic Castle far overshadowed what should have been the highlight of the trip, which was watching my film. Um, so, uh, yeah, when I, I've seen Sean on Penn and & Teller. And then I saw that he was coming to town, that he was, you know, performing in town. It was my birthday. And so uh, it all just kind of came together in this perfect storm, this, this great gift that's, that's kept on giving. Um, so, yeah, I never, I, I hadn't considered doing uh, something on magic, but I also never knew that I was going to have a chance to meet someone like Sean and get the sort of entree into the magic world that he's been able to provide. That's really cool. 
I think that Magic Castle thing had a huge impact on him. And the reason I say that is the largest perk we have on the Kickstarter is to go to the Magic Castle. You get to be an executive producer, rough edit, uh, go to the premiere, all that. Plus, you get to go to the Magic Castle with me as a guest and have dinner and go see everybody, meet all my friends. And and like John's going, yeah, that was pretty epic for me. I think it'll be pretty epic for some one individual on Kickstarter. Yeah. I don't want to go do that night with you too, though. I mean, oh, that'll yeah. be completely different. <laughs> yeah. It'll be all of us together. We're no one says you can't back it yourself, you John. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that is awesome, man. And it sounds like you've really put a lot of thought into how to tie this story with the magic side of it and bringing it to the Kickstarter. What was the what was the de- decision maker for you to really bring it to Kickstarter versus other means of funding or visibility? I think we do have other funding and visibility, but I, I came to John with the idea of using the Kickstarter after being on your show. 100%. Nice. Uh, I said, you know, you connect so well with our community and the yeah. people. And I was like, I want to know the communities behind this. I don't want to yeah. just do something and wonder if there's going to be an audience. That was honestly in my heart. You know, I, I have no ego when it comes to nobody cares what I'm doing or what's going on. I, I really believe that. So I wanted to go, if we made this film, will the community actually want to see it? Yeah, and I said, right. if we make a Kickstarter and we offer them the opportunity to have a credit in the film and, and be able to see a screening of it and get the score and, and would they support it? And John was kind of against it at first going, yeah, it's going to be a lot of work. And I was like, yeah, but it'll tell us if there's an audience and it'll tell all right. those producers and distributors, look at how fast this thing is you know, exploding and that there really is an audience. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's been really encouraging to get the response so far because so much of this process is largely me sitting in my room, my room by myself uh, with all these ideas and voices bouncing around my head. And you don't know if all this time that you're putting into it, if this is going to speak to anyone else also. Um, so, yeah, it's been really encouraging to, you know, to get support from you guys and the support that we've seen so far just in the last uh, like five hours since uh, we launched the campaign um, that, yeah, but this is an interesting story that other people do want to see. All nice. that time in your bedroom is paying off, John. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I feel like that's synopsis. something we all want to be able to say, right? <laughs> yeah. and the, the synopsis of the film and being able to put together the entire timeline of us, because we're going everywhere. We're going, uh, we're going to go to Erlanger, Kentucky. Nice. We're going to the USBC playing card company to talk to them. We're going to Texas to hang out with Richard Turner going to London to hang out with Michael Vincent, Spain to be with Juan Tamariz, and then France, of course, with Alexander Duvivier, also to go to the castle uh, where the accident took place. We're going <laughs> all those places. I'm very excited. That's really cool. And yeah, so that's fun. <clears throat> from that point of view, too, I mean, for you, I know in the trailer you mentioned like you happened to be in France the one time and this idea kind of just struck you. What really made it stand out so strongly for you? Like what really... I mean, I feel like we see these little inconsistencies throughout life every day, but this one really just stuck with you. This thread started a long time ago. Uh, um, So uh, I was at the 4F convention, you know, the the, the most exclusive magic gathering, blah, blah, blah. And one of the lecturers, uh, Steve Beam, uh, with his uh, self-working, semi-self-working automatic card tricks or something is this series. It's a great series of books. He, He pointed out about the Queen of Spades. And I was like, really? I never saw that before that. And, and he does it as a trick where he does like a, a, an um, Elmsley count to show four Queens facing one way, snaps his fingers, and then one Queens facing the other way. Like he could turn the head. And he says, and if you look in your deck, your queen is now turned two. And I'm like, what? And I looked and then <laughs> I saw all these guys in the audience all going, my queen of spades is facing the wrong way too. And I thought, Oh my God, nobody in this room, like the best <laughs> card magicians in the world had any freaking clue that that was happening with that card all this time. And then, that sat with me for a while. And then uh, Kostya Kimlet and I were talking and I was telling him about how I had this idea. He said, yeah, I'm going to change the queen of spades holds this card in your hand. I'm going to make it look like a six of spades. And I looked at the symbol and said, what is that symbol? He said, I don't know. Well, I started looking at more cards, saw it on several cards, saw that those symbols were drawing me to certain things. And it was just a nagging thing in my head for like a year and a half, two years. And then when I was in France, I was doing a lecture tour. Uh, I stopped at this one airport. I was at the airport was basically closed. It was me there and nobody else. Uh, it was just me, small little regional airport. And I looked out at the flag and I said to the custodian who let me into the building, I said, what flag is that? And he said, oh, it's the flag of the region. 
I said, what region are we in? And I know that symbol and I couldn't put it together. And then it was about three or four days later, I took a day of sightseeing, went into this castle and behind the throne, it was the only place I've ever seen the, the crest of the uh, French king is yeah. usually fleur-de-lis. And this one was split in half with half of it being fleur-de-lis and the other half being that symbol. And immediately it triggered in my head, oh my God, that's from the deck of cards. Oh my God, that's from that flag. Oh my heavens, I need to know more about this. Mm. And then I just went down this rabbit hole and it all, the pieces just all just meshed together. And all those years just went like a light bulb. That's funny. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah, that's funny. All these hidden messages, you know? They were there and just staring you right in the face. You just didn't see them just like we didn't see the Queen of Spades. I mean, it's funny because no matter what, like when anybody creates something, I feel like they always put in something that means something that nobody knows about, you know? Yeah. So just finding, I mean, even when we have people on the show and they explain things that why they put certain symbols in, why they put certain things in their deck or in their book or whatever it is that they're working on. It's always really cool to find that stuff out, but you know, I have stuff hidden in my deck that I don't, I haven't told anybody. Great. You know, every so video game has got an Easter egg. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, it, no, it's, it's websites fun. have Easter eggs. It's, it, it's just our nature, right? Yeah. How many, king, you you know, the four Kings, they, they all have hands, right? Yeah. How many, uh, hands hands. Does, <laughs> how many hands does each King have? Not two. That's right. <laughs> That they all have one hand <laughs> on, on both ends, right? What'd you say? There's one hand on each end because it's double end. So if you cut it in half, you look, you'll only see one hand on the king of diamonds and on the king of clubs and the king of spades. But the king of hearts has two hands. Oh. Yeah. Because one's putting a sword through his head. Yeah. That's and the crazy. other is holding on to something in his hand. And that thing that he's holding on to has that symbol in it. Which gets even crazier. <laughs> So then, you know, it's the Suicide King because he's got the sword running through his head, right? Yeah, with no point. <laughs> but, but here's weird. Uh, look at the two hands in the picture. The next time you're looking at your deck of cards, just look at the two hands on the King of Hearts. And then look at the sleeves. Because the sleeves don't match. They're two different arms. It'll freak you out. The King of Hearts? King of Hearts. If you look at the sleeves, you'll oh, see yeah. the two sleeves don't match. Who wears a jacket with two different sleeves? I, mean, I don't know. Have you ever seen Supreme jackets? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, that's just weird. This is a Supreme King now. There he is. Now he's a Supreme King. That is crazy now. And yeah, yeah and all funny. these little things that we just take for granted whenever we're looking at these cards, we never even think about it. Like, yeah. Another another thing is, is like uh, all, the je uh, all the kings, right? How they have like their hair's not colored and either is their beard, right? Yeah. And, the, and it's, it, the it's kings, so... <laughs> three of the kings are old and one king is young because three of them have mustaches and beards and one doesn't. Yeah. I think the one that's dead doesn't. The king of hearts. Like maybe he's a younger king. But I'm just touching the tip of the iceberg. Wait, wait for the film. This You'll just go... We are excited to check this thing out. Honestly, every, it's going to be interesting. Every I mean, piece of art means something in it. But you, you, you look at the King of Hearts, and he, it, is that a sword, or is that just a small knife? Yeah, it's not really. Originally, it was an axe. In the original illustrations with an axe, it wasn't until it got to England that it changed over to a sword. Interesting. It, but it can't be a sword, because there's no point. Yeah. So I mean, you can have swords a, like without points, but... The other, the, the other one, what'd you say? You can have a sword without a point. There are swords that don't have points, different Especially types. But, no, but, but, it's but in the region. It doesn't have a top to go through the head. It might have been a little bit gruesome to see those swords sticking out the other side of the head. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think the if at the end of the film you never can look at you know a deck of cards the same way again, I think that's pretty cool because you know film can have all kinds of transformative effects. Um, this isn't you know uh, a life saving film. Um, we're not uh, you know dealing with you know serious uh, global issues, but uh, if it can change the way that you perceive one simple thing, then maybe you know makes it easier to open your eyes and, and look at other things that you take for granted in a new way. Yeah. I, I disagree with John when he says it's not a life-changing thing, and he keeps saying it. And to me, I think if we can make people see things differently and question things and use logic instead of, you know, thinking that there are, you know, space lasers, uh, we can change things. We really can.
that this world is going in such a direction that there's no common logic anymore. But but if you can actually lay it out in front of people and people then when they're told something will actually question it. Yeah, I think we are changing. They still won't things. question it. That, that's why. <laughs> Some people, you can't expect everyone to question right. it. As long as you get one person to question it, one that's more, the start. One more on the good yeah. team. I think that's great. That's, yeah. the start, that's what man. that's what magic does great, also, right? Because it routinely just makes us believe things that we know part of us know isn't true. Um, it does make also make you question, you know, what your perceptions of reality are, and so it's uh, they kind of uh, those two ideas gel well. Yeah. yeah. I want people to walk away wanting to look at a deck of cards again, never seeing a deck of cards the way they did before, and then look at something else that's normal and go, what am I missing in that? Yeah. Yeah. No, kind of crazy. A, that's, that's a good way to, to, you know, try to get people to stop and smell the roses per se, you know? I, I absolutely agree. Yeah. Uh, so I think if, even if you aren't coming from this, uh, from a magic fan, a magic perspective or a playing card perspective, that there's still something that you're going to get out of that story. Yeah. Yeah. And a little history about France, which is kind of cool. I've sure learned a lot. <laughs> we have, haven't we? About some well known famous characters that when we say their names, you go and say, Oh, I know who that is, but you don't know anything about them. And then to find out, you know, uh, uh, some of them have been married like three times, and you're like, Wow, well, that's an interesting thing. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, yeah, it's eye opening. Yeah, medieval royal families were really mixed up places oh. to be. <laughs> yeah uh, yeah <laughs> i i can't get enough of it too because i just think the whole premise behind this like you said diving in and questioning things that we've thought we've known for hundreds of years you know how has that kind of how has that investigation kind of treated you because i feel like that's got to be an uphill battle it, it every time i sp spoke to an expert who said oh no that's the way it is i would ask them for a reference for it well, it's just the way it is. And then they would they give me some historical reference. Well, this guy said that. And I said, yeah, but at the exact same time, two other people were arguing my side. Well, yeah, but they didn't go with theirs. So I said, why? <laughs> it's like, there must be a reason why these two were going one way and only one was going the other way and the one won. Oh, maybe it's because he was sitting in the Royal Crown's court. Oh, that could be the reason as opposed to the other side. So yeah, it's been an uphill battle and a lot of people, because you know you're you're going against what history says are going to say yeah no that's just not right and because there's books written on it but books are written by the conquerors right <laughs> yeah well i mean i i think it, what it comes down to is it's like i mean just as humans we always have to find a reason for everything right and sure. it the the it could be that the designer just wasn't like <laughs> detail oriented so yeah, they just effed up a lot. And, my and my argument is there's so many details. It can't be that he didn't care about the details or she cared about the details. You know, what's even crazier. Um, we all know all the things about deck of cards, you know, like 52 weeks in a year, 52 cards, the four suits, the four seasons, four seasons 13 yeah. lunar cycles, 13 cards. We all know that stuff. 365 pips. It's all mathematical and everything. And we're going to develop uh, delve into that too. I have a friend, Jeremy Olson, who's a scientist now, but originally my student in magic, who now gets Thank funded you. in huge think tanks. He's going to Harvard now uh, to talk about how magic and the brain work together. So we get to interview him. But uh, uh, what's really crazy is all that in the deck of cards is hidden. It's all mathematical. Uh, do you know who's buried at the castle uh, where this accident took place? Who's buried there? Well, Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> that's really interesting it is right yeah he worked at the castle he had his own secret tunnel to get to the castle to his own home in this town oh wow yeah dude that's that's a lot of there's a lot of open questions as to what's <laughs> going to happen in this documentary i'm not going to lie i'm excited to find out everything about this investigation here i think you have uh you have an interesting cold case ahead of you for sure and it's only part of the thread what I'm really enjoying is what I'm telling you this, the look on your guys' faces and your, your viewers are going to tell you that too. The look that you get in the moment. I'm going to be telling this to Juan Tamariz and yeah. to Michael Vincent. And, well, awesome. I don't know how Richard Turner is going to take when I talk about the designs. It's like, <laughs> just, don't, just don't talk about his deck. He'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> 
But to talk to people like, you know, Alexander Duvivier, who's like generations of magic and say, here's something you've never even seen in this and then tell them my theory. I just want to see what their reaction is. I think on film, that'll be fun to see because some are going to accept it. Some are going to question it. Some will doubt it. Oh, uh, some sure. will embrace it, right? Yeah, no. Well, we're, we're, and we're exploring both sides of the story and we're taking people, you know, listening to people that also you know disagree with the, uh, the side that we're putting forward. And so I think we're putting a pretty balanced uh, presentation of the idea. And um, yeah, even if you don't believe it, it's definitely going to make you think. Yeah. yeah. And think hey, that's that's good. Well, like you said, you can't always give people the answer these days. So making them think is the, the step in the right direction, you know, get them Absolutely. to use the logic, get them to see what you're trying to show them and let them make their own decisions. That's all you can do with it these days. And I think that's an exciting journey, though. And I think one of the best parts about documentaries these days isn't always the answer at the end. It's the journey you take to get there. This is yeah. my argument. Before we even talked, before we came on air, I was talking about how I'm not proud of a lot of the movies and motion pictures I've done. This is <laughs> one I'm going to be proud of. And the reason is the ones I'm most proud of are the ones that didn't have an ending. I call them water cooler movies that afterwards people stand around a water cooler and argue about the ending and what yeah. they think it meant. And that's way better. If you talk about it the day later or a year later, I win because yeah. you're talking about it, right? You're yeah, also people that will uh, come away with this from like a, a different kind of engagement with magic. If you've never really been a magic fan um, and never really thought about what it takes to become, you know, as good as Sean is or the other people in our film, um, it's an incredible process. I mean, there are different creative skills that you have to master and be able to seamlessly integrate uh, into each other. I find really impressive. Um, you know, I come from a world where we film, we all contribute small amounts of something to creative, collectively makes the movie magic. Um, but Sean has a very different process. And so if you walk out of the film also kind of with a better appreciation of just how incredible it is, the things that they pull off, um, then that's also our job done here. Yeah, and it opens up a lot of doors for, you know, new scenarios in tricks, right? Yeah. You can definitely use, like, you know, the, the um, you know, the show that you saw where they use the, the queen, you know, in yeah. the trick. And you that, that take, definitely opens up more. Even if you only took one of the elements that I'll explore and talk about, you could build an entire show around talking about that in the future. And yeah. and I, I easily see... I'm building the whole court card conspiracy act, which by the way, is one of the perks that if they bid high enough, they'll actually, I will sit with them and teach them the entire routine. They get awesome. customized decks. Did we mention that? There are <laughs> we haven't even gotten decks. onto the decks yet. Which is, yeah. <laughs> there are customized decks as part of the perks in the Kickstarter. I have designed a deck of cards, still designing, but you can see the prototype because I've got a few more ideas I need to put in. Look at that. Ooh, it's got it's fancy. That, that's, a lintel of a door that's at the castle, which is really cool. And then you that's see really the cool. quest with the shared symbols and then the sword and the axe, you know, for the difference in them. Uh, all of that is is worked into. And there's Charles the Seventh. Isn't he a handsome young man? Yeah. Sad he died so young. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love the I love the incorporation. Was it suicide again. or murder? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. That's was the question, an isn't it? <laughs> I feel like I'm in a game of clue. Yeah, it's the best. <laughs> and, or game and of throne. It, it is like Clue. And we have uh, uh, extra cards that are included. Uh, that isn't a face card. It looks like a face card, but it's an extra card because nice. we're staying true to the face cards because that's important to the design. Yeah. Right. But I've added other cards in that are historical references to those people because my plan is if I showed you a King of Hearts and I shake it and it turns into that Charles the Seventh card and that's then goes really back dope. to the court card again, wouldn't that be cool? That's really dope, yeah. That'll, yeah. Be, that'll be a fun a fun little... Uh, Way to get people thinking even more on it, man. I love it. It'll be like uh, a magic trick with history interlaced yeah. into it. And, and You're going to learn it. whether you like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, who doesn't love magic and history? And then I was like, uh, everybody doesn't love magic. <laughs> <laughs> the majority of humans don't like either of those subjects. But if you put them together, you're going to take it. I don't know. It's, magic it's, these it's, days is getting more traction. So you're and good it there. depends if it's real, real history. You know, most people don't know real history. <laughs> well, I would agree with that. Like Sean said earlier, history is written by the conquerors. So, you know, yeah. everything we know is colored in one way or another and, and kind of geared towards the people who want to tell the story how they want it to be told. And this very well could be another example of that. We are in a time when a lot of history is being corrected. <laughs> it was written, but now it's being corrected. Yeah. And it's fun when people go, well, he did this. Uh, there was the Christopher Columbus thing the other day. Somebody said, I guess Neil Armstrong discovered the moon. 
And they're like, Prove it. no, the moon was always there. They said, oh, so he, he just went there. Yeah, yeah. So, so Christopher Columbus, he didn't discover America then. They're like, no, he did. No, no, no. It was already there. You just said that with Neil Armstrong. No, like, he, oh. he, he just stole America. Yeah. <laughs> so w- when those things are being rewritten, correctly maybe not rewritten corrected because they're not rewritten the, the history really is the history we just haven't been taught it correctly right. uh, maybe this is one of those cases yeah and, no. yeah I, I mean it's absolutely the possibility the possibility is there and i think you've definitely hit on the right time for this to to go live on kickstarter and i'm just going to throw it out there too for anyone who has not checked out the kickstarter yet the link is down in the description below as well as pinned to the chat so make sure you go ahead over and check out the lost in the shuffle kickstarter which is live now and definitely trending up it's already received the project we love rating from kickstarter which is awesome Dude, i i gotta say man i am really excited to see how this is going to turn out because i think not only have you sold me even more on wanting to check this this documentary out But I think the whole concept, you know, like you said, getting people to question the things that we're just so used to and maybe even so used to that we just take it for granted. You know, that's a that's a powerful message there. Yeah. And I think we're going to elevate magic with it, especially card magic, because they're the audience when they watch it, they see us do a card trick. You know, when you do something, I I had a person just the other day said, oh, they just finished watching my show, standing ovation at Hidden Wonders. I come off and the lady says, oh, I really wish I brought my kid. They would have liked it. (laughs) They, they would, did, did you not like it? It was like, what? They, they don't mean to be demeaning, but the first thing they think is magic kid. And yeah. this is going to be nothing about magic kid. This is going to show them that we're artists that work hard. We spend hours, days, months, years to develop a single move to put into a routine that's comprised of dozens of moves. Right. And they're going to see that. And we're, we're pulling back the veil a little bit, not exposing anything, but just enough so that they can go, Oh my God, this is really something special and i think it'll really help to elevate the way we're perceived and less like you know the top hat and bunny rabbit out of a hat guy no and i think that's i think that's important because you know what in this day and age too the the narrative of magic is changing with social media driving such interaction at younger ages for magic in different ways with gimmicks and and you know card magic and coin magic and a lot of those traditional types of magic are not getting the same traction that they used to so i think this really like you said this is going to open people's eyes to what magic can really be. And that magic is something not just for kids and for birthday parties. And, you know, you don't lump magic in with balloon art. Yeah. And then magic can be forced. Yeah, no, without a doubt. And I think I'm excited to see, to see how this really changes the face of magic for hopefully a next generation. Well, John's an award-winning director, and I've been excited with everything I've ever seen he produced. And just the trailer alone for this one made me giggle and smile. I'm really looking forward to what he does with the footage that we collect. Yeah, and I'm looking at the, the, the life experience of getting out to travel and meet all these incredible people, meet them through Sean and through like his experience and his um, interaction, his, his friendship with them uh, is going to be pretty incredible just to, because, you know, it's not very often that any of us get to meet, you know, world champions and people who are at the top of their game at whatever it is they do. Uh, and so in the space of a few weeks to get to meet all of these people uh, who are at the top of the game, I think it's going to be a pretty special experience. And I hope uh, that energy comes out through the film. Yeah, no, for sure. You're definitely uh, mixing in with a great crowd for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe they all said yes. <laughs> I, I gave, I gave my five, five acts. He said, we need only four. I said, well, I got five. And then you pick from those ones. And he says, well, let's see which ones say no. And one by one, they just said yes. And we're like, okay, we just started at the top and everybody said yes. It was like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, that. that's like the, the go-to number when you're interviewing people, right? Is four. Yeah. That's so John's gonna, have to just out that way. John's gonna have to alter it to five right with, with <laughs> this it's great because we look like we're an episode of the um brady bunch we're Very missing nice. a few people though <laughs> <laughs> well we're just we're just it's, it's a magic thing so we're missing all the women did you notice that sorry <laughs> uh, and, and we have to we have to do all this too we have to go oh yeah you have to smile at each one <laughs> very good yeah, oh, now, our cast is really diverse, very unique. Uh, I, 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 when I pick when I pick my list, it was just people that I really love their magic, and even more, I love them uh, for their love of magic. Yeah. Uh, when when you look at them, they all have that same 
I see myself as kind of a geek that I have this passion that's, you know, just kind of over the top, but all, all of the guests that we have, they're, they're just at that same level, if not slightly above Richard Turner's obsessive, you know, deck of cards in his hands. Uh, he, he admitted in his uh, documentary dealt that uh, he made love to his wife while doing one handed Charlie A's. <laughs> is, he, is he still married? Yes. <laughs> and, and she is beautiful, talented, and an amazing woman. Uh, yeah, it's too funny. He he's got. Have you guys seen the documentary Delt? You have to watch it. Yeah. Uh, his story is unbelievable. He's a fascinating guy. <laughs> he, um, uh, I'm in it. Uh, just towards the end, he gets uh, uh, the um, the close up magician of the year award from the Academy of Magical Arts, and I'm presenting it. And That's I really didn't cool. even know I was in the documentary. I was on a plane, and the person sitting next to me was watching it on their seat, and mm -hmm. I was just kind of snoozing and just you know. Mm -hmm. And then there was a tap on my shoulder and I looked over and the guy says, excuse me. I said, yeah. I said, is that you? And he's pointing at me. <laughs> I went, that is me. What are you watching? And it was like, oh, it immediately set mine. and went, I'm going to go watch a movie. Was, that's too funny. That, that's got to be super awkward. <laughs> <laughs> you got to imagine the guy sitting there watching it and kind of looking over and going, that's weird. Why is this guy next to me on the television? <laughs> and what, um, and what is, I would have been like, how does he know that? Like, I mean, yeah, well, if you sit next to a person for nine hours on a flight, there's a pretty good chance you might, you know, notice some of him. I mean, <laughs> maybe. It and depends. This kind if they're, of if they're sleeping, I, I'm, yeah. I don't even look at them. I'm like... it, it, I guess it depends on how observant you are in, in most situations. But yeah. we actually had some great questions come in from the chat here as well. And I think one of them, which... <clears throat> You may or may not want to answer because I don't know how much this ties into the plot. But one of the questions that came in was, what is one of the weirdest things you've discovered throughout your kind of investigation so far? Oh, for me, I think it's just that, that royal history, um, like um, the, the age, like people were becoming like leaders of countries at like 13 or 14. Uh, you know, marriage was not something that you did for love or because you even knew the person that you were getting married to. It was all political expediency and like uh, finding good allies and, and wars. And so you end up with people being like married multiple times before they're like 15 or 16. Um, and just the, the intrigue and the incestuousness because everyone's related to each other. Yeah. Um, I, I never really read very much on this world. And so that's definitely been the weirdest part for me. I, I would agree with them. I mean, they're, <laughs> you know, they, they didn't have divorces. They had annulments and, and, um, and, and interesting. And if you couldn't get an annulment, you just, you just killed the other one. Yeah. yeah. Very, very <laughs> political. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and how, when you got married, you negotiated what you got to keep and what you were going to rule. And if you had offspring, who would get what, and what their titles are going to be before, before you even had a kid or the ring went on your finger. It's really crazy. It's called a prenup now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and our, so our story has a, a marriage by proxy as well, where two of the people were not actually able to be beside each other when they got married. So the one king sent someone in his place for the That's wedding right. ceremony. Can and then the wedding that? consummated when they the two of them lay in bed and touched shins to each other. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> exciting, exciting marriage there. Yeah. Uh, so they, they never actually met each other face to face in the, during the duration of their marriage. Prior marriage. That's crazy. It's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. Yeah. And so another great question that came in is what is the ultimate plan? For this documentary, where are people going to be able to see it once this funds? Is it going to be a Netflix thing? Are you going to, I know you're going to probably do like the whole like documentary tour with it and everything, but what's the ultimate plan? Get it out as broadly as possible. So we have been talking to some broadcasters and distributors already and have had some, some positive interest in, from that front. So uh, yeah, hopefully you'll be able to see it in all the kind of conventional places that you go to find your movies. But we're also really excited about doing a theatrical tour with, with Sean, where you know you, you come to the theater and not only you're seeing the movie, but you're you're getting a show uh, from Sean. Maybe we'll bring local magicians on. We'll do a Q and A after, so um, it's not just you know an hour and a half of sitting quietly and, and watching the movie. Um, it's going to be an entire night, and, uh, and I think that's going to be a lot of fun as well. I'm yeah. excited by that. You know, we could do it like in Texas, and Richard Turner could come out and do stuff. I think it'd be grand. And go to London, go to Paris. We can go to all those places and have them come to the film. And ones where nobody else can come. Hell, I'll go see the movie over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> you will. <laughs> yeah, 
and then streaming afterwards. Any, any, I love the idea of it being theatrical release and hitting the festivals and all that. And then after that, going to a streamer. And we've had some really great interest from nice. all around the world. Uh, yeah. We did a series of film festival shopping, buying things this summer. And they, they told us we should expect one or two things of interest. But but we kind of exploded, didn't we, John? Everybody wanted yeah, to talk about it. A ton of meetings. And, uh, and that's also one of the, the purchase part of the crowdfunding campaign um, is uh, early access, digital access to the film. So um, that's another way people can get their hands on it. Yeah. Really awesome. so, oh, if all works according to plan, uh, we should be done delivering by like August, September next year. That's right. awesome. That's really awesome. And How so, long is that editing uh, phase going to be? Um, <laughs> probably about four or five months to do the um, the picture edit. Uh, there's going to be animation, so there's a couple of few animated sequences that we're going to get done, uh, and then we have composers who are writing music for the entire thing. So to give everyone the time to do it right, probably something like that. Nice. Nice. We have an animation sequence, and I have been trying so hard to do my, uh, uh, is it seven or six degrees of separation? Is it six? <laughs> six, six degrees, degrees yeah. of separation. I've been oh. trying to get Neil Patrick Harris. I so desperately would think he would be so perfect to do the voiceover animation for the two little segments, and it would make my world just huge. Amen. If, he, if he says no, then my, my alternative, I don't think John thinks it's a great idea, but I thought my alternative was Teller. <laughs> to, to say Mary to my teller would be awesome, wouldn't it? That would be yeah. cool, actually. See, I think that's oh, cool. God. Nobody would know who it is. <laughs> Which would be crazy. But but uh, Neil Patrick Harris, first and foremost, I just think would be such a joy. Because that would first, be a sequel. Yeah. Just, he's so into magic. He, and this would really be an elevation in the world of magic that he'd be participating in. Yeah. And, be really uh, cool. I know that they're watching this right now. <laughs> if you knew Neil, please tell him that, that, that we love you. And we want you to be part of our film. Oh my doesn't god! Have, reach out. Doesn't he have like a new like a? Just uh, started a new thing. Um, it's a newsletter with magic and cocktails and everything. Yeah, dude, you should just reach out to their email. That's the best way to get in touch with some of these guys. They start something new, and there's like less people responding to that email. Ah, I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. Do it. Uh, That's it. it. So, so one way I always like to kind of wrap up these little live with sessions is Sean, John, for anyone who's on the fence about this campaign, what's one thing you would say to convince them to go back this right now? I've got oh. the perfect answer on my end. You want to go, go first, it. John? Go for it. Mine? Yeah. Um, you're watching Decking Around. You're as addicted <laughs> to playing cards as I am. <laughs> <laughs> Help make my and John's dream come true by backing a film and get three decks of cards at the hundred dollar perk level. You get nice. to have your name in the credits. Uh, you uh, get to uh, get the score, access to the video in advance. You get three decks of cards. Oh, and uh, if you add afterwards, after you've done the hundred dollar level, you can go into the uh, no perk section, add another fifty bucks, and we'll throw in another six decks of cards. So for nice. 150 bucks, you're getting eight decks of cards. That's like backing any card project on Kickstarter, basically, right? You get nine, actually. Uh, six and, oh yeah, nine. You get nine decks of cards. <laughs> so you get nine decks of really cool cards and you're in a movie. You got your name in the movie. Come on. I mean, it's a no brainer. That it's, by itself is pretty much priceless. So. Right? right? Yeah. <laughs> and in a movie that's cool. Yeah, and you're, and you're joining the community. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, John. What'd you say? Exactly. You're joining the community and uh, and helping push. Uh, you know, if you've uh, if any of the messages and the things that we talk about, the themes have uh, have resonated with you, that, then help us get that out and and share your passion for cards and magic and help us share that with other people. Yeah, for sure. I think that's the easiest sell. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you're if you if you were on the fence, yeah, don't need to be on the fence anymore. You'd go back Jump and go check fence. it out. Get excited about this documentary. Get excited about a potential alternative view to the history of playing cards, which I think is always exciting, especially because 500-year-old mystery, man. What could be yeah. better? What That's could cool. be better? Lostintheshufflefilm.com. There you go. Yeah. Lostintheshufflefilm.com. For anyone who hasn't checked out the Kickstarter, links are down in the description below. Thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight to check out this episode of Live With. Sean, John, thank you so much for coming on to chat with us about your project. We're excited to see this fund and come to life. I think this is going to be amazing.
for the playing card and magic communities. So thank you guys both so much for all the effort and energy you're putting into this. And Sean, as always, thank you for your energy you just bring to everything. Before, Tyler, before Steve, we go, I have something funny I love that you I guys. just noticed. What's that? Dude, our names together, Steve and Tyler, right? Yes. Is a musician. Yeah. Now, their names together is also a uh, uh, Isn't Sean John? Is Sean that John. John. Sean. That's clothing. Okay, that's it. Close. Yeah, you're thinking of, uh, yeah, that's clothing. So, hey, John John close enough. A rapper or something, too. No, that's though, right? Sean Paul. Yeah, Sean Paul. That's right. Sean Paul's the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I knew Sean John was something. Here we go. So, Let's get down to the rabbit hole. I was, I was wrong, but it's still cool. We have clothing oh, and good. music. so I love it. I absolutely love yeah. it. And we got playing cards on Kickstarter. So definitely go check out the Kickstarter, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. And make sure to tune in tomorrow when we're dropping this week's What's on Kickstarter. See what's up there. We already know one thing that's up there. And we're definitely yeah. going to be checking it out. So make sure you check it out as well. We love you all. Peace. Thanks, brothers. Peace. Cheers.